Welcome back. In this lesson, I am going to do the painting for our Stabil sculpture project. Uh, looking at my final example here, this is my um, example that I've worked up in the other class, and you'll notice that in this example, I've painted my entire model black except for this one red dot up there. This is kind of based off the idea of um, Alexander Calder's Rouge Triumphant where he's just got the one piece that's red and the rest of it is black kind of um, bringing both unity and emphasis to the sculpture. So in our um, artwork I'd like you to choose two to three colors, three at the absolute maximum. Um, the one color here, black in my sense, is bringing unity to your sculpture and so that all these pieces even if they're a little bit differently shaped or differently balanced they'll seem to hang together in concept and form of the overall balancing and then your one focal point here uh, is different maybe it's red maybe it's blue maybe it's some other color that you've created by mixing but this color will stand out against all of that other color maybe you've got your whole thing painted blue and to balance that off you've got you know one orange one which is the complementary color which would contrast or maybe you've got it being a monochromatic uh, scale here you've got all dark blue and one light blue or something something that's going to stand out and look um, and, and create emphasis on this piece maybe you want this piece to have the emphasis and you've only painted this one your special color so think in terms of two colors maybe three at the maximum if those three colors were all to work out well. Um, but we want to create emphasis on one piece. That's our main goal. The emphasis on one piece and unity on the whole. So uh, coming back to our painting area, we're going to just choose our two colors. I'm going to use my red um, for my one area of emphasis, just like I have on my final example. I'm going to choose black for my uh, unity color. So thinking of, of those two things, my unity color, my emphasis color, I want you to think of them in that way. As far as using brushes, I'd say you know, use a big brush for all your big stuff or big areas and use a small brush for the smaller areas. Now, um, as we get started, make sure that you've peeled off any tape or other little bits on your sculpture or your uh, balance pieces here so that you have a nice uh, even area to work with. I did not take the opportunity to paper mache over this, but if you were working on this as an extended project, which I uh, will hopefully have time to make a video about later, you could take this whole model and paper mache it. Um, maybe add texture into each of the parts or make them just smooth and flat. Uh, and I will deal with that hopefully in another video at a different time. But for this, for this project, uh, we're just gonna keep the regular cardboard and just paint the regular cardboard. Okay, so um, getting started, you should have all of your pieces completely finished. Um, one thing that you're going to run into, especially with uh, the weaker joints, like right here in our uh, stabilizing piece or thinner pieces on your main, main shape or something, is that the water within the paint is going to make the cardboard a little bit flimsy meaning it will get weaker as soon as you add that water that's inside of the paint onto your cardboard. So just be careful in the way that you're holding it and that you're painting it so as not to destroy the, um, the delicate work that you've done, especially if you're one of those people in class who's taken um, a lot of effort in making the, uh, the parts of your sculpture very detailed or thin. Some people really were into making thin detailed parts and I don't want those parts to get ruined. Um, I'd say just lay, lay your pieces on the table and paint one side at a time and then change them out like this one. Since I'm almost done with it, I'll set it to the side and I'll paint the main sculpture piece uh, and let this dry as my other piece is getting painted. All right, so there we go. I've got my first layer of unity color. Set this one aside. Bring back my main body shape here. I'm 
Now in, in this particular class I'm using acrylic paint so it will have a little bit of ability to bend along this uh, main seam. If you're using something else like tempera paint it might crack along this seam because there's there's not the plastic binder that in the paint and uh, it's a like a different kind of binder that is not meant to be flexible so it might crack if you're not careful so just keep that in mind as you're painting that you might have to put one last layer of paint over the top once the sculpture is together um, and that might just help also if you're working uh, and you're not making a video you could just keep the whole sculpture together and paint it that way um, that might be easier depending on what situation you're working in as far as working in class uh, the reason why we're using those sculpture boxes in class is so that you can paint these and let them stay in the sculpture box to dry. Okay, so once you've painted it, you can just leave your sculpture assembled and leave it in the sculpture box in class. Okay. Now, as, as far as creating other things, if you were to uh, take some parts of your cardboard and do what I had done with uh, like this piece up here, you could take different pieces of the cardboard and make quite a textureful uh, part uh, to your sculpture. You know, even taking the front part here, if I had taken an extra piece of cardboard and glued it onto the front. Um, like I did for this piece over here, you could create quite an interesting texture on different pieces of your sculpture. Um, so, and I'll talk about that maybe in a different move in a different video. As far as how you can uh, glue those pieces together, it's quite straightforward. You just glue the pieces together and then peel off the top layer of cardboard, um, and that will give you a nice base of texture. All right, so there's the front piece or the front. Uh, part of my base sculpture painted. I'm going to set that one aside now and paint the little pieces of my balanced sculpture here. So uh, as we paint these, being careful to make sure you uh, don't get all the paint on your fingers. And if you want to, I think it, I, I don't think that it would be advisable because it's going to be messy and difficult to do. But if you really want your whole sculpture, uh, like Alexander Calder's, to just all be one color, you can paint over the metal with this acrylic paint. Now, that being said, it's going to be messy. Um, the paint might not stick so well. You might have to make a couple, uh, a couple different layers on top of each other to kind of get all of the metal completely black. But it's possible so if you want to do that I, I welcome that but I just want you to know ahead of time that it might be difficult so prepare yourself for um, for a lot of extra work which would mean coming in after school or before school or during during your break time to get some of that finished all right Now this last piece, I'm actually just going to bend it over here a little bit so it's more in the screen. I'm going to paint the edges. Like so. wash that brush out. I'm actually just going to leave it there for the next part of the video. I'm just going to put it in the water so it doesn't dry out. And then I'm going to take this smaller brush to paint in um, the red corrugated wiggles of my interior cardboard piece here. And 
since my black is still a little wet, of course, it's going to kind of smear together. So I might have to put another um, layer of red on top of this once I'm done, or once it dries, it has a chance to dry. Okay, so there, that being my red piece, I know it might be a little difficult to see in the video, uh, but there's some smears here of black. So I'm going to have to let that dry and then repaint it um, once again. So for this video, I'll, I'll sign out for this video and say that I will come back in the next video once these pieces are dry and finish off.